I'm Shadow with Q102. And I'm Jason with Brown Derby. And this is Drinking 101. That's right. Uh, we realized lately that we've actually been a lot, doing a lot of drinking and not a lot of the educational. Not well, a lot of teaching. Yeah, yeah. I can't say that because you're like the, you're the smarts guy. I'm just the looker. Yeah. Um, but we, we did get an email asking us to yeah. um, share some insights. And just keep those emails coming. But You can email, email, email them to me, shadow at q1021.fm. God, do you think I'd already started drinking? That's right. It says, Dear Shadow and Jason, you guys are great. I watch you every week. Can you go over the basics of wine tasting, how to sip, open bottles, etc.? Signed, Naked in Oklahoma. Naked in Oklahoma? I think that was one of your followers. I don't know, one of your fans. How about Naked in Springfield? Don't lie. <laughs> don't said, naked of, said Naked in Oklahoma. <laughs> So, uh, we'll do a few basic uh, wine techniques here, so um, bear with us as we do this. So basically when you're opening a bottle, uh, you there's a lot of openers that you can use. Mm -hmm. This is the old classic, this is what a lot of us use, you see it in restaurants. It's known as the waiter's corkscrew. I've never seen that little knife. So not only is it the waiter's corkscrew, it's a, I will stab you in the face if you it's attack me. It will protect you after work, yes. Well, I'm, now I need one of those. So this is like a little foil cutter. So what you'll do is you'll take the top, you'll go to the top of the bottle, you'll use your thumb and your index finger, and you'll press in, and you'll turn the bottle with your right hand. What if you're a lefty? Then you'll do it the other way. Okay, just making sure. And then you'll... You'll hope that it comes off easy? Correct. This is a dull uh, knife. That's part of the issue. Oh, so you need a new one. Correct. I need to upgrade my... I need to upgrade it. Because, see, you can tell from the thing, it's not getting any cutting at all. Well, that, don't... So, you work here at Brown Derby. Don't I, you have, like, 8 million of those things do. here? But I think it would be a little awkward if I got up from the camera and then went and got them. So yeah, okay. imagine the foil being off. I feel like I'm just going to get elbowed by you is what's going to happen. And you'll pull down. This is a double jointed uh, corkscrew. So and you just slowly pull up on it. And the reason why you use this in theory is it keeps a nice clean cut on the foil. And when you're presenting the wine, you want a nice, clean presentation. As clean as this showing is? Correct. And some wines have bigger corks than others. That's okay. What, that's what she said. So. That's a Jason joke. Very exciting when Finally, Jason... we've got the bottle open. So you're going to pour. Okay. And then Shadow starts drinking. Yes, Shadow starts drinking. But Everybody what you're supposed else. to be doing is several things. It's known as the S's. So uh, basically you pour the wine. The first thing that you do is you're going to sniff. So you put the wine up. You want to get your nose all the way in there. Oh, okay. okay. One of the things that you're trying to tell is if the wine is corked. And if you've been on Watch Us on the show, uh, we've had some corked wines from time to time, and you'll get a definite uh, funkiness to it. It won't smell like normal. a smelly sock. Yeah, type or a of funkiness. old cardboard or something along yeah. those lines. Those are a good indicator that it's really it, it's not easy to smell though. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes probably, it can be very faint. So this wine yeah. smells fine. It smells good. Yeah. The other thing that you want to do is you want if this smelled a little off, you can kind of go back and inspect the cork. Uh, don't smell the cork because do you know what cork smells like? Cork? It smells like cork. So really there's nothing to indicate on the base of the smell, but you see people do this in restaurants all the time like, oh, yes, it's very good. That's complete farce. And then you're sitting in the corner going, you're wrong. Yeah. Basically wrong, you're just sir. looking to see that the cork, there's no mold or mildew on it. Not that that's oh. an indicator either. And yeah, that there doesn't appear still. to be any damage, but you know, you never know. Yeah. So. After you sniff, everything tastes fine, you're going to swirl. That's swirl? The, that's the second S. Okay. I picked a red wine because the other thing that you're going to look at, you hear people talk about is legs. If you've ever been to a party and somebody says, oh, this wine has legs. What they're referring to is 
the drops as it comes down on the on the oh, glass. Oh. So as you swirl, right there. The amount of lines that come down is known as the legs. Okay. And basically what you're looking cool. for is higher alcohol wines have a lot of legs, lower alcohol wines have less legs. So when you hear a wine, somebody say, oh, this wine's got a lot of legs. They're really, what they're talking about is This is some good wine. Yeah. That's what they're really saying. So That's we, awesome. Uh, I never knew that. Uh, I've never, three years of drinking here. 101, I, I never knew about we're the going, legs. We're thing. going old school. We're going okay. back to the basics. So we have sniffed, we swirl, now we sip. Mm, this one's at a good temperature. I don't want to do that thing. He's doing that thing. I'm not going to do that thing. I'm drinking. So that thing that I was doing was actually getting air to interact with my wine. The very first time I did that, true you story. You spit it all I over yourself. It all over myself. Great. I got to wear this back to work. So. But air, when you open a bottle of wine, air mm -mm. helps the wine evolve. Eventually it will kill it, but in the short term, it helps it evolve. So, um, the fourth S, after uh, it's, not, it's my least favorite S, is either spitting or swallowing. Actually, that just became my favorite S. So, <laughs> yes. uh, now it's really hard to do this with a straight face. So, at a wine tasting, it's actually appropriate to spit because if you swallow, it deadens your yes. taste buds. Um, but if you're at a restaurant, obviously you're going to want to swallow. Yes. And there you go. The four S's of wine that Shadow has completely turned into a very inappropriate. Um, okay, so once again, have pretty much a killer um, corkscrew. Yeah, one I better like the than the one. the ones that wine. go like this. Yeah, and, and there is no wrong way to doing it. The best way to get it is the easiest way for you to get out of the, you know, get the cork out. For us in the profession, we like to use these usually with a sharper uh, So use whatever tool. makes you feel comfortable. Right. And then the four S's. That's right. So Same you're again. going to sniff, sniff, swirl, swirl, sip, sip, and then swallow slash spit. And if it has legs, it has more alcohol. If it has less legs, it has it's less a, alcohol. It's a softer wine. All right. Drinking 101, an educational version. Thanks. Cheers.